those of us that uh, go to conferences always have a kind of running joke. Like, we always make a bet as to who arrives on the morning of the second day. <laughs> After the badges have been collected, you know, we've got our program and so on. But thank you all. Thank you all for coming to a uh, few meeting, uh, a signature program of the Asian Contemporary Art Week. Um, I'm going to just make two sort of points, uh, one of which Lisa was highly encouraging, <laughs> as in it was only a yes, there's no no, to say a little bit about my own kind of personal practice in the context also of why I'm here at Asia Society. And uh, I came from Singapore, I arrived in New York uh, in ten, uh, about 10 months ago. Um, Asia Society, um, some of you may know, but for those of you who don't know, was one of the organizations that was set up by uh, the third Mr. Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller III, after the devastation of the Second World War. And he also, along with it, helped to resuscitate the Japan, the Japan society. And it was very interesting because, you know, for a man who was incredibly wealthy, you know, who was part of that small elite group uh, that literally, you know, uh, the Rockefeller Foundation in that time had a larger sort of budget than quite a lot of countries in the world. So it's that kind of scale. And he felt that, you know, for a country like America, which had won the war, that at the same time, it should pay attention, especially to Asia, where he felt two-thirds of humanity, you know, is, and he felt that Asia will become very important, and as big and as powerful a country as the US was becoming by then, in fact, already been by then, he, that it could not sort of ignore this new sleeping giant that is there, and hence, you know, the Asia society was born. And art and culture was always very central alongside it. Um, Asia society has three pillars. We have the policy and business, we have education, and we have art and culture. And among these three, in terms of our mission of building understanding and building bridges between the US and Asia, I think art and culture is seen as the, the most long-term uh, sort of pillar because it, it is aiming for a kind of cultural change, a kind of paradigm change. Policy and business is very short-term. You know, you, you enact a policy to, you know, support free trade and so on. It's tomorrow, but it's different from the art. So that's uh, where we are. Uh, just a little bit about as a curator, I mean, basically, uh, I'm a very odd curator of contemporary art because I started with traditional art, with classical material, with people on the other side of the library, um, so to speak. And... Uh, it was only over over the course of 10 years that I became more and more involved uh, with contemporary art. And the program that I am slowly trying to develop here at Asia Society, um, in a sense, is colored by you know my own personal belief. And that is that if you look especially at the art from the non-Western countries from Asia, not just Asia, but other areas outside the Euro-American zone, this idea that artists and artwork somehow through history become detached from society. This is this pure idea of an autonomous art practice that exists in a bubble as the kind of end point. You know, for example, you think of the, the sort of minimalism and the, the Greenberg kind of conception didn't really make sense. And it's incredible how those of us that work in contemporary art practice, this is very actually very steeped in us because of our, our education. And in the region that I work in, in Southeast Asia, this is a very odd kind of idea uh, for one simple reason, that you could not speak of artists and art as being apart from society when artists and art historically were part of that sort of general movement towards developing your own identity, especially in response to colonization. You know, you, you cannot get away with it because we were colonized. You know, it's something that, that we have to deal with. So the program that we have here at Asia Society reflects increasingly will take a, uh, that kind of perspective, that kind of idea that artists somehow are active agents in society, whether they are conscious of it, uh, or not. So 
at the same time, this idea that that you know we increasingly the world is trying to drive uh, people into sort of tribalist containers is something that we would want to resist and we think that the role of art is to do that. The exhibition that we have upstairs now, and I hope you have a chance to see it during the break, of the first of the Chinese modernists to go to Paris, Zhao Wuji, is very interesting because of course he belongs in three worlds. The Chinese world in which he was born, his adopted homeland of France, and of course he died in Switzerland, which is another sort of interesting thing. And when I spent three years in Paris uh, doing the Singapore Festival in France, the one story I always remember was that it was the year of China uh, in France. And the first exhibition of the China Festival in France was of Zhao Wuji in the China Cultural Center in Paris. And the French were very confused because their opinion is he's our artist. How could you do a solo show of a French artist as the year of uh, China in in uh, France? So I think these kinds of things clearly show, you know, how, how that sense of where you belong, that sense of articulating, you know, where you belong, and the fact that the world today is very messy and we belong in multiple worlds. You know, in Mandarin, we say, you know, we, we frequently, the fact of artists today is we are stepping on two boats at the same time, sometimes three boats, four boats. So I think that that, to me, is a kind of guiding principle for my practice. So we're very happy that... Uh, all of y'all are here today. Uh, Asian Contemporary Art Week and what uh, Lisa and her team have built is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Asia Society is very uh, happy to be back into the fold. Uh, I know in the last few years we were uh, a little cool <laughs> towards that. Lisa is smiling from cheek to cheek. I can see her teeth. <laughs> But uh, we're back because we feel that it is important in this kind of context that artists and arts organizations support each other. Uh, we can't stand alone uh, anymore given the reality of what is happening around the world and in this country, as you may know, in uh, recent weeks. So thank you all. And, uh, you know, I, I think let's look forward again to a second day of not just of sharing of a but of a kind of communion and a search for empathy which i think the world sorely needs at this moment so thank you very much